one of the trickiest practicals at GCSE is all about waves. Let's take a look. There are two parts to it. One is water waves using a ripple tank. Now you have a lamp above a tank of water um, and a motor with a straight edge that makes ripples that go from one side to another. Now the light's purpose is to shine light underneath um, so you can see underneath the tank the ripples on a piece of paper below and you can measure them. Now what we're going to measure about these waves is a couple of things. You might see a question commonly asked, uh, how do you calculate the speed of the water waves in the ripple tank. Now, the absolute essence of this question is knowing how to use the equation wave speed equals frequency times by a wavelength. We're knowing what frequency is, what wavelength is, and how you can measure them in this instance. So let's deal with one each of those things one at a time. We're going to talk about frequency first. So frequency, we should know, is the number of waves passing a point per second. So how do we go about doing that? Well, we'll need a stopwatch because we need to know time to get the second element of our frequency. Um, so one person will have a stopwatch um, and one person will be counting essentially. Now we're going to count the number of waves passing a point, not in one second, I'll talk about one in a second, but passing a point in, let's say, 10 seconds doesn't have to be 10, but needs to be a lot bigger than 1. Then we're going to divide that number by 10 to find out how many waves there are in one second. Okay, Helps with accuracy. We'll talk more about that later. So that's frequency. Now wavelength, um, we are going to do a similar thing. Apart from this time, you need something different. You need a ruler or a meter stick, depending on how big your tank is, um, to measure the length of each wave. Now, again, we're not going to do one wave because they are really small. It's really difficult to measure for one wave. Um, and one thing to, to go before this is in, before you measure it, you might want to take a photo. That's kind of useful or a slow-mo video. But either way, we're going to use the ruler to measure the distance between 10 waves, um, then divide by 10. Okay, it makes it more accurate if we do it for a larger number then divide by what we need to find. Now, to find the speed, you would then just quote the equation, say multiply two numbers together in this equation uh, to find the speed in meters per second. Now, um, what's really important, and this comes across with the uh, vibration generator on the right as well, is that by doing multiple waves, you are improving the accuracy of your experiment. By measuring one wave, you have things like um, a measurement error, random errors from timers, and you also have um, you know, one person can measure one wave incorrectly if it's very, very small on a ruler. So reducing the chances of errors. Now, one other method you could be asked to talk about is kind of unusual, but you could be asked to measure the speed using distance divided by time. It's a similar-ish method. You just measure the distance and time taken for individual waves to reach the end. Now, let's talk about the waves on the string then. So uh, on a string, you have a vibration generator, which, as the name suggests, vibra uh, generates vibrations um, across the string. The waves then reach the end of the pulley and come back. Now, at certain frequencies, you see these patterns start to form on the string. Uh, these kind of like waves or loops uh, form on the string. Now, you usually have a little bridge or something there to uh, kind of keep the fixed the length variable. OK, now, while this looks like a complicated setup and it is kind of an A-level prac, um, it is like easier than the Whipple tank in lots of ways. You get a similar question, something like, how do you calculate the speed of waves on the piece of string? Now, it's a similar answer to start off with. We're going to use the equation. I'm not even going to write it down again. So frequency times wavelength. But how do we know what the frequency and what the wavelength are? So let's do them one at a time again um, and see if we can spot any similarities. So um, let's talk about initially uh, the frequency. Now for this, the frequency is very, very straightforward. So the generator will have a number on it or a dial, like for example 12, which is too small for it to write here, um, but it will have a number on it that will tell you the frequency at which the vibration generator, red vibration generator is going up and down at. So up and down 10 times a second is going to be 10 hertz. Okay, sometimes it's called a signal generator, by the way. Now, the wavelength is the thing you have to measure. So same as before, we need a piece of equipment to measure it. Usually it'll be a meter ruler here, not a ruler, uh, but it could be a ruler um, to measure the length of a wave. Now, what's important to notice here is that we're going to try and do multiple waves again. Now, depending on how many loops you've got on the piece of string, um, determines what the wavelength is. But essentially, if you measure um, across several loops, then you can essentially find the wavelength 
using the meter ruler. Now, what's important to notice here is that on my diagram, that is one whole wavelength. Okay, now one whole wavelength would be two loops. So I've actually written here divide by number of loops, um, and then you uh, for two loops, that's one wavelength. Now, to find the speed, we just do frequency times wavelength, easy peasy, same as before. And the reason we do those several loops, again, is to improve accuracy. Okay, lots of measurements is better than just one measurement. Another way to reduce the chance of errors um, is how you measure the wavelength. Um, so quite a common thing in physics when you're measuring something with a ruler like the wavelength is to avoid parallax errors. Um, parallax error means not uh, viewing something um, like uh, side on or perpendicular to or in line with. Okay, so viewing it a bit higher, a bit lower means the reading is different to what it should be, which would be an example of a random error. Um, you could also uh, miscount the number of loops um, as well, which would be an issue with this practical.